Hello, well, hello again. We're back. You probably did not expect to see us, but here we are. All right. Well, the, uh, the chat is open. You guys can start chatting it up if you'd like. Tell us where you're coming from and uh, uh, all about uh, what your favorite session has been so far. So today, this session was originally supposed to be uh, hosted and the the expert who's going to be speaking today was going to be Leanna from Podex Go, but uh, she unfortunately wasn't able to make it last minute last night, but she was able to send us over a recording um, of her presentation. And so we're going to play the recording of the presentation for a while, and then we can also uh, give you guys a walkthrough of what they're doing. And then also we will show and share the video of their prototype that um, is actually on Alexis and Christian's YouTube channel. So um, we will be getting all of that going in just a second. We're excited to still be able to at least present what Podox Go is doing. And uh, we appreciate them uh, being a part of the, of the event and everything. So um, let's see here. I think we are getting this pretty good to go. Video going. The last few people come in here. So and a quick tip too, uh, we've seen a decent amount here, but uh, if you're in the chat talking to people, make sure that you select respond to everyone or send to everyone a lot of people are just having on host and panelists so uh that's what makes it so literally only the present the presenter can see your comment not everyone else um so if you change that um to everyone then you'll be able to chat back and forth to all the other attendees as well absolutely all right well we will uh get this video rolling and um and then we'll be back at the end of it so Cool. Can everybody see that? All right. You should be able to. Yep. And like Zach said, we're just going to play this. This is from Leanna, the co-founder of Podex Go. And uh, then we'll jump back in when it's over. And um, you guys can feel free to send any questions or chat um, uh, in the meantime. All right. Thanks, everyone. Tiny homes. Ever since we released our first model, the Grande S1, in March of this year, we have been receiving emails, phone calls, and in person visits a lot. People are excited to see our distinctive homes and witness how the folding structures and the interior design work together. I'm really excited to be here today with all of you to share our story and how we use modern manufacturing tactics to build tiny houses. Podesco, we are a relatively new brand in the tiny house market. We were founded three years ago during the challenging time of the COVID. It was during this period of time, we realized that millions of people were struggling with housing affordability. We saw an opportunity to address this issue by combining modern manufacturing process with the innovative housing design. Our goal is to help families and individuals achieve their dreams of owning a private space for work, living, and relaxation without the stress of waiting, building, and financing. Our team members have been sharing their personal stories. Some of us were struggling to afford a studio apartment as a recent college graduates. Some were planning to sell their mother's house and let her mother to move in with them. And that there is a story that their relatives recently bought a piece of land with a beautiful view, and they were planning to build a vacation house. And we all agree that a house is not just a place to sleep. It's about home, it's about family. It's a reflection of ourselves, the way we're connecting with others and the world. But the house are incredibly expensive in today's market. Let's consider a 600 square feet studio in Riverside County, California. Although it's a small living unit, it still takes six months to 12 months to build and it costs over 200,000. Then we come up with a big idea. What if people could buy a house online and have it delivered to their doorsteps within just 90 days? 
much like we're purchasing items on Amazon or ordering food and groceries. Can we build a tiny house that is easily transported, assembled on site, and maintained? Then we delved into the world of tiny living, off-grid energy solutions, pack model RVs, ADUs, and the manufactured house. We realized the vast potential in this area. Here is what we come up with, the Poldesco Grandi S1. The Grandi S1 is our first and game-changing model. It's an auto-deployed tiny house on wheel, starting as a compact trailer. It can be expanded into a spacious 364 square feet, ready to move in studio. The best part is that anyone can set up the whole house by themselves, eliminating the need to hire professional for on-site constructions. For those who haven't seen our Grand S1 before, here is a video created by Alexis and Christian. They are from Tiny House Expedition. They were here with me last month to showcasing the Grand S1. Check out this video. Hello, everyone. This is Stephen with Renergy and Podex Go. This is our brand new Grande S1 prototype tiny house. <laughs> The main thing that we're excited about, it is a fully street legal tiny house. So you're able to get it small, take it on the road, and then once you park it, you could deploy it to a 22 and a half wide living quarters, which equates to 364 square feet total. So it's a great size. You're not going to have any issues. And the fact that it's street legal is one of the biggest key factors. So the length of the unit is going to be 20 feet long. So when you have it completely folded, you're at eight and a half feet wide and 20 foot long, completely street legal. And if you have the accessible towing vehicle, you're able to take it down the road with no problems at all. So here we have the stairs and the awning. These fold out when you're deployed and then they fold in when you're ready to hit the road. Same thing over here. So here we have the pistons, which are gonna control the automatically deployable units. With a touch of a few buttons, you're able to fold in and fold out the unit at ease. Now we're going to go ahead and go to the back and show you the energy system that's powering the whole Grande S1. So here we have the command center. So you can see the key is engaged and you can see all the indicators. And then down here you have the four buttons that are going to be able to handle the hydraulics, the expansion, at the same time leveling the system completely. So you have everything that you need to set up the system right here at your fingertips. And now if we go down here, this is going to be the bread and butter of the power system. So this is the Renogy Lycan power box. It's actually five kilowatts of power, and it has the internal batteries, your solar inverter charger, and all of the necessary components that you need to be completely powered off the grid. And it's tied into our solar system on the roof. So we have eight 175 watt panels on the roof, which is gonna be a 1400 watt solar system. So that's 1.4 kilowatts of solar on your tiny house. So it's a great size. It's really keeping up with the demands and it's keeping everything charged. So you're able to use all of the power at your fingertips whenever you need. Again, here we have five kilowatts of available power, which is a lot of power, but for any application that you may need more, we are exploring different options with this prototype. So here we have the Aura system. This guy has five kilowatts of stackable storage. Currently we have 15 kilowatts. It can expand all the way up to 20 kilowatts. So like I said, with this unit, we are exploring different options to really have the most power accessible. Up here, we're actually gonna have the water heater all the way up on top. Right underneath is gonna be the mini split blower. So the control center does allow you to automatically open up the unit and level everything. Sometimes you do need to do a little bit of fine tuning and that's where the hydraulics control comes in. So here you can see everything, all of the controls for all the different pistons to control the legs and make sure that you are completely leveled wherever you park. I would like to show you what's going on inside with all of the features. So let's go. Hi. So this is the inside of the Grande S1 prototype tiny house. It is again, 364 square foot of single level living space, which provides a lot of comfort and ease of living. 
So this is going to be the living room kitchen area. And here you can see the table. This table is awesome because you're actually able to fold it out and fold it in. And the chairs are easily foldable and they actually slide right in here. So this is going to be the kitchen area. So up here you have your cabinets, which could be used as a great pantry area. And you can put all of your kitchen stuff in here, tucked away. And we're also exploring the option of having a oven in this area as well. Nice soft clothes cabinets. And then you have your fridge and freezer area as well. So we have a very efficient fridge. So it's not gonna consume too much out of your battery pack. And you're still able to freeze ice and keep all of your food cold in the fridge. So here we have the kitchenette area. We have loads of space up top and on the bottom. So you can see over here, we have two cabinets up top. And then we have two cabinets down the bottom as well. So basically a full kitchenette where you can store everything that you need, everything that you might you know, need for a kitchen, it will be at your fingertips and stored away nicely. So here we have the sink. The sink is great because we have a nice cover that keeps it flush. Once you take the cover off, you do have a nice dish basket as well. So you put all your dishes in here when you're washing them. Right here, we're actually going to have the hot plate as well. So the hot plate, you're able to use the teapot. You're able to heat up your, you know, any kind of food. And when you're not using it, you can put it away and you can utilize all the counter space. So here we have the living room area. You can see the furniture, which is included with the Grande S1 model. We have the coffee table, which is a nice compact size. Here we have a very nice, comfortable couch, which can be expanded into a sleeper. So if anybody needs to sleep in the living room area, you're able to do that. Over here, you can see the floor space, huge. You can still do yoga, you can do exercising. And then we have these beautiful windows. You can see they're nice blinds come up and down, very nice to keep all the shade in, keep the sun out. So the Grande S1 is fully livable now, but we are listening to all of the feedback and we are continuously making improvements. So if we look over here, you can see at some of the connection points, you see some light coming through. So it is completely sealed right now, but we're using a clear rubber seal. So you can see all of that light coming through. One thing that we are improving, we're gonna have a black seal. So you won't see that light coming through anymore. So over here, we have the bathroom. As you can see, it is a compact size, but it's enough room to really do everything that you need. Over here, we have the shower area and we utilize a nice shower curtain and we didn't use a door so you could really utilize all the space in here. And the whole bathroom is a wet bathroom. So you can actually get everything wet in here. It can stay wet and nothing's gonna get damaged, which, which is great. So over here, we have the office bedroom area. So right here, you can see our office desk. Very nice, very compact, and is able to fold up and tuck away and get out of the way when you don't need it. So here we have the full closet area. We have different compartments and then we have a safe down here as well. So you can put all your important stuff hidden away and protected. So up top, we're actually gonna have the blower for the HVAC system. So when you have the air conditioner going, you can feel the air coming through or if you have the heater coming through, same things. On this side of the room, we have the bedroom. So we're gonna have the Murphy bed. It's a queen size bed. You have the comfortable pillows. You have everything that you need. And when you're not using it, you can fold it up and make it flush with the wall. Just like the other side of the house, we have a lot of windows. So you can see outside and you can really enjoy the outdoors with these big windows. So the Grande S1, it doesn't take a long time to set up. Once you park it, the full deployable unit is going to take anywhere from about 15 to 20 minutes. So it's very quick, it's very awesome, and it's very easy to do. With all the furniture here, it makes it very comfortable. You can live and really enjoy everything in this tiny house. Everything is easily stowable when you're ready to pack up and hit the road. All you got to do is start folding up all the furniture. First is going to be the office table. Next is going to be the Murphy bed. Next is going to be the kitchen table. You're going to go ahead and fold all of the chairs, stick them in the table, and fold the table in. After the kitchen table is folded up, you're going to go ahead and move it in front of the kitchenette area and make sure that it's out of the way of the folding walls. Next is the sofa. You're going to go ahead and break down the sofa and put it in the front foyer right by the front door. So the remaining furniture, like the computer chair and the coffee table, can be stowed away in the bathroom. 
Once the furniture is put away safely, you're gonna go ahead and go outside and remove the four legs manually. Once those four legs are manually removed, you're gonna go ahead and get the control panel remote and hit the fold button. Once the fold button is engaged, you're going to see the wall start folding in, and this whole process will take about eight minutes, and everything will be closed and, and ready for you to go and hit the road. And you can tow the Grande S1 with an F-250 pickup truck or equivalent. Or we're happy to connect you with a third-party transportation company. And we're inviting all of our customers to come by our, our Ontario, California warehouse to see the Grand S1 in action. And our engineering team will be here to show you how to set up the system, how to park it, and how to use everything. Currently at Products Go, we only have the Grande S1 model available, but we have been taking a lot of feedback from our customers, and we're going to be integrating that feedback for future development. So we're going to have a foundation model and a fully off-grid model as well. If you want to be a part of this journey and provide feedback, you can go onto the website and go join our co-creation lab. A lot of what we integrated into this model was from that co-creation lab. So I would definitely advise, you know, anybody that has any kind of feedback, provide it there. And if it's really good feedback that we do use, you will receive an award as well. So the partnership between PodXGo and Renogy actually happened by us just discussing the options with PodXGo. They needed a power solution, and we've been in the market for a long time providing power solutions to the off-grid market. Tiny homes, RVs, vans, the DIYers. And when PodXGo came to us, we had a perfect solution. So we were able to get a good solar solution, a good battery backup system, and provide all of the need that something like this would need to make sure that you're not going to have to worry about running out of power. You're not going to have to worry about, you know, any issues coming up. And if something does come up, you know, Renogy is going to be here to take care of you. One of the main things with the uh, Grande S1 was really making sure that we we're making something that's affordable and accessible to everybody. You know, RVs, smaller, uh, uh, tiny houses, they're great, but they come with a lot of, you know, issues here and there. And sometimes it's a little hard, you know, dealing with the ins and outs of, of these tiny houses. So we really made sure that we use all of our resources appropriately and made something that anybody could get into and enjoy a completely livable house, which is awesome. And we really, we love what we did here. We really love the Grande S1 and we're excited to expand on it. I hope you all enjoyed the video and get a better understanding of what is Grande S1. With Grande Homes, we now provide three unique floor plans that caters to customers' requirements. The one shown in the video is the most popular plan, which balances the areas of each functional space. We are currently working on a Grande S2, which has the same house structures as S1, and it is especially designed to be a senior-friendly home. This involves careful planning and modifications to ensure the safety and the comfort of the senior people. It includes like single level living, no step entry, bathroom safety, sleep resistant flooring, easy to reach functions, handles, and emergency alerts. Our pre-order campaign for the Grande S2 will launch next month. Furthermore, our plan for the three includes a more private layout and a larger kitchen area. And now our focus is on ensuring the efficiency of house production. This is why we do not provide customization options at the moment. As all of our houses are manufactured on a product line rather than being built with a traditional method. You must be curious about how products go homes are manufactured. We are located in California, Ontario. We also have an overseas factory. Setting up a manufacturing facility overseas can result in lower our production costs. We have created a video of our factory and I would like to offer you an exclusive tour today. Some of you may already spoken with my colleague, Leo, 
and he is now working with a factory. He will be leading the tour, so sit back and enjoy. Welcome, everyone. We're thrilled to have you join us and take on the journey of our state-of-art factory, while we create innovative and sustainable tiny house on wheels, Grand S1. Since we just launched Grand S1, we've received an overwhelming of interest, with many increase focused on manufacturing processes and materials. Today, we're excited to give you an unique insights about how we produce it. And you'll see firsthand how we're redefining the world of tiny living. So without further ado, let's dive in. Our factory is 500 acres, and we're proud that we have earned ISO 901 for our unwavering commitment to quality. Creating a self-holding tiny house on wheels requires exceptional creativity, ingenuity, and attention to detail. From concept to reality, we're dedicated to delivering the highest level of precision and craftsmanship in every home we build. In fact, we're proud to say that our manufacturing process takes just 45 days, allowing us to get your whole dream home into your hands ASAP. Now let's take a closer look at our main work area. This is where the magic happens and where our professionals bring Grand S1 to life from start to finish. The process of building a Grand S1 involves several key steps, including building the frame, filling the plate, laying the circuit, and installing the hydroloop system, the electrical and plumbing, and also testing out. Basically, the Grand S1 model you receive in the future will be produced right here. Our raw materials includes A36 steel panel, hydraulic system, insulating polarized panels, home furniture, home appliances, and more. They are sourced from trusted suppliers who meet our stringent quality standards. Each batch is thoroughly inspected before it enters our factory. The most unique feature of Grand S1 is this hydraulic system, which allows one person to fill the house in just 15 minutes. This technology has never been used before in a tiny house, and we have conducted thousands of tests and adjustments to ensure its flawless operation. We have also received some questions about durability tests, like how and where do we conduct all these tests. Once the manufacturing process is complete, our team conducts a thorough inspection of each Grand S1 home to ensure that it meets our high standards for quality and safety. Our factory is equipped with a large outdoor space, which allows us to conduct a variety of tests, including a towing test, compression test, and a folding test. These tests are essential to ensure that our homes are built to withstand the toughest conditions and provide our customers with a safe and reliable living space. So stay tuned. We'll give you a closer look at Grand S1 and show you exactly how we receive all these tests. At our factory, we take pride in constructing the homes that meet the highest standards of quality and safety. That's why we've chosen to build the Grand S1 in compliance with the guidelines of NOAA the national organization out of native housing. NOAA directs us to build homes that meet both RVI standards and the residential requirements, ensuring that our customers can enjoy the comfort and convenience of a traditional home while also maintaining the flexibility and the mobility of a tiny home on wheels. All right, guys, that's all for today's back to tour. Thank you for watching this. We hope you've earned a better understanding of our commitment to quality and innovation. If you're interested in Grand S1, visit our website, productsgo.com, and don't hesitate to hop on a call or just email us. Thank you. Thank you, Leo, for the tour. And I hope you all enjoyed. The house in the video will be ready for our customers to pick up next month. Those are the homes that were ordered by our initial group of customers who supported us during our crowdfunding campaign. They placed their trust in us even when all we had were 3D rendering photos online. The very first Indiegogo backer is Mr. Tim Adaman. And he was with me last month, uh, last week in Ontario to check out the house in person. And uh, I got the video of him to share his story with us. Hello, I'm Tim Erdman with Erdman Energy in Telluride, Colorado. I was one of the first to discover the PodX on 
Indiegogo and became the first backer. I've been working with solar since the 70s, but University of Colorado and worked with Solar Energy Research Center uh, in Golden, Colorado, and ended up uh, in Telluride in the Solar School uh, in 1978 and with the Department of Energy solar, Commercial Solar Demonstration Grant. Then, just in the last four years, we installed the Telluride Community Solar Garden, and that has become uh, very well subscribed. Most of the nonprofits in Telluride benefit from it. But now I'd like to demonstrate something else, and that is a better way to solve a huge problem that most resorts have, which is it's too expensive for people to live there. We have to provide all the services who work in Telluride. And so a tiny house makes a lot of sense, but an eight foot wide tiny house is not really livable. But a 20 foot wide by 20 foot tiny home starts to make sense. It's hard to tell how it is to live in one unless you're in one. So my idea was to try one of the PodX Grand AS1 and see if it does feel comfortable to live in, if it does solve a problem and help people understand what the options are. So the property I have has solar panels on it now for the community solar garden and that's connected to the grid. But above that, where I'm going to put the pod X, it's off grid. And so combining pod X with Renergy, I'm hoping to demonstrate living off grid in a tiny home. And I'm not going to be renting them out. I'm not going to be doing anything more than just showing people what the options are, what the possibilities are. And that would be the uh, hopefully the pod X is the type of unit that people will appreciate and understand that it can be done very quickly, relatively inexpensively and very comfortably. So that's where I'm hoping to begin with this demonstration project in Colorado. So thank you. I'd like to explain the my gratitude to everyone who has supported us on this journey, from our dedicated team to our customers and the partners. We are now taking orders from both end user and the dealer network, and we offer free showroom support to let our dealer partners to better demonstrate the house and provide local service. So if you have interested about our house or partner with us, please reach me out. Our open house is held every Friday in Ontario, California. So you can visit our website and find the reservation link to schedule your appointment. We are excited about the future of affordable and sustainable house. I hope to meet you someday. Again, thank you tinyhouse.com, Zach and the team to have the global tiny house conference and having me here today with you all. I wish you all enjoy the event. Thank you. All right, you guys. We're Can back. you guys uh, see and hear us? Drop in the chat. We're back. We're hello, back. Hello. We're back. Awesome. Okay, cool. 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 Well, uh, yeah, hopefully the video played through well to you guys. It was cool that she was able to uh, input those other uh, videos inside of her video. It was kind of like a video section, but it was really cool to be able to see the factory. I hadn't seen that video actually, which was really neat to be able to watch that and see the, the quality and care that they're putting into all of their uh, homes that they're building and um, and then also it was cool to see the first Indiegogo backer and him being able to talk about that. And we we're actually just having a conversation with somebody who's right outside of Telluride as well. And they're talking about uh, the expense and how hard it is for 
um, people who are uh, trying to live or work in Telluride and they're having to drive like an hour and a half, two hours away from Telluride to just sleep for the night and then they go back the next morning. So just because Telluride has absolutely exploded in, um, you know, popularity and so home prices, hotels, Airbnbs, everything are just sky high. So um, they're having a pretty you know, decent challenge there. Um, you know, from a livability, a lot of people are being priced out, having to move outside the city, but also like Zach was saying, workers that are coming in, whether it's to be staff at a restaurant or um, operate your own business or, um, you know, construction, any of those things, they're, they, they don't, they aren't able to live in that city anymore. So they're having to dr make massive drives uh, just to get into where they need to work. So uh, that's an interesting solution that that, that gentleman's doing there. Yeah, and then uh, Deb, I, I totally see what you're saying as far as like the aesthetic of it, that some people don't like the modern, some people do, but I don't know if you saw, they had those three versions kind of side by side, and that third one was like the wood and, and whatnot, so um, I'm excited to see what else they come out with, because obviously it's just their first one, and they're going to be building more and more different types of uh, homes as well, so um, and then, you know, I don't have the actual... Uh, the actual like text or specs, I mean, on their um, insulation, R value and so on. But um, I mean, I'm, I wouldn't have any doubts that they fare better than most RVs. So. And they might have that on the website. I just drop that in there. Um, Podexgo.com. Um, and then they're pretty uh, open to just reaching out with any questions and they'll um, respond and answer those for you as well. Yeah. And, and like they said in that one video, I'm not sure if you saw it, but in that one video, they, we're requesting uh, suggestions. So if you have a suggestion, whether it's like the aesthetic or whether it's like, hey, improve the R value like this, that, or the other, uh, they're they're welcoming that and they're wanting to build literally a product that people want and not just what they're looking at. So definitely Let's see if there's any other questions. Um... Leanna, the co-founder, couldn't unfortunately couldn't join today, so that's why we played her video. But um, we'll relay some of these questions to her as well, and of course, you can reach out to her um, anytime too. So, yeah, so I think they partnered with Renology for the solar side, um, and I think their office is in that same building, but I don't think they're the same company. Uh, although, I'm, yeah, I'm. I'm pretty positive that they're not because they they just uh, partnered up on the actual solar side of things but yeah I think it is a really good um you know idea for what they're going to be achieving and obviously uh it's it's not going to be the one-stop shop for everybody for the, the rest of the world for the rest of life but uh for a big uh demographic of people it definitely kind of hits the nail on the head for exactly what they're looking for or temporary housing or uh, being able to bring it into a resort area or uh, whatever it is, or even just for people who are wanting to be able to travel a little easier and so on. So there's a lot of different uh, really good use cases for it, or maybe people who want an ADU, but they want to be able to have the option to uh, put in, excuse me, park a temporary ADU inside of their spot and then eventually move it and do like a, an ADU on foundation. But sometimes it just takes a long time or you don't have the actual cash needed to do an ADO on foundation. So can use it like that. Yeah, that's right, Michael. I think there is a lot of emphasis on the mobility of the unit because um, it can literally move like a 20 by eight and a half, a 20 foot long by eight and a half wide. That's super easy to, you know, tow with a, any sort of, not any vehicle, but any, you know, medium to large size truck, just standard truck can easily tow that. And you don't have to worry about being like, you know, 30, 40 feet long, like some of the other tiny homes. Um, but, uh, but when you get to your actual destination, you can deploy it and it's about 22 feet wide, which is, um, yeah, it becomes a lot more functional. So Nick, you're wondering about Renology selling the solar pack packages. I believe they do. Um, yeah, that's how I'm pretty sure they got in contact. Uh, products go is looking for solar and then i'm not sure if um, they sell that exact kit that they i don't know if that's like a special one they made for products go or not but um but it was cool how you could like uh add on the additional like battery banks so it's like you can buy you know the basic package and then it's like later on if you need more solar you can just buy it yeah it's pretty, neat. it's pretty neat 
Yeah, you're right. They're kind of a bit like an RV with slide outs, but uh, like expandable on both sides, the full width, which is, you know, a, a bit more than uh, just normal slide out and so on. Hey, Nino and Victoria. <laughs> Haven't seen you guys in a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, boxable. Well, there's two different ones. Blockable and boxable block block blockable <laughs> blockable i believe is in california as well boxable is uh yeah i believe they're in um colorado they're they're the one that yeah get a lot of press and whatnot lisa the water hookup for the products goes just like a nevada. normal rv so boxable is in nevada that's right yep yeah let's see so yeah very obviously similar concepts um you know all, everyone's trying to solve that that problem we'll see but um you know I, I do like that this one's towable with your own truck and kind of makes it a little bit more tiny house on wheels friendly to kind of diyers and whatnot yeah and christy thank you for the kind words about the putting the whole conference together well first of all we couldn't do it without all of you guys so we we really appreciate everybody joining us and then there's a lot of people behind the scenes um like our team members gel and ran and some of uh you know, just basically people who are helping put it all all together. So we're very thankful that it's uh, coming together and we do it literally for the community aspect of it, to bring everybody in and to just be able to uh, like kind of share thoughts, get updates on what's going on and everything. So um, yeah, we definitely appreciate the ability to uh, bring the community together. Cool. Yeah. And then, we got a little bit of time here till the next session. Um Let's see the uh, drop yeah, their can, links we can one more time their, here. Walk through their website real quick and show the models. Um, yeah, we could do that real yeah, quick. Uh, we'll open up for Q&A too for just uh, general tiny house stuff as well. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, this one maybe. Can you not share a tab? That's what I thought this was. I believe that's just sharing a tab. Real quick, we'll just do a quick walkthrough um, since they're not here. Um, but that's their uh, website there. Um, so you can hop on and uh, just take a quick look at what they're doing here. And yeah, a lot of different information starting at 85,364 um, square feet. And like shows here, you can pretty much tow it pretty easily with a mid size to, you know, uh, full size truck. Um, Noah's certified them. So they're uh, NOAA certified, which is good to know. They're safe and they have everything that they need as far as that goes. Tiny House Expedition did a cool video on them that you guys can go check out on their YouTube channel too. I think some of these videos are what we just watched, so we're not going to go into all that. Uh, did she say where that feedback was? I couldn't quite catch um, that. In the video, it's in that video somewhere. Maybe we can find it on here. But um, but yeah, so here's some of those different models. I'd actually be interested to look at those. La Vida. Click on that. No, oh, it's not clickable. Um, coming soon. Oh, coming soon. I see. Yeah. But yeah, uh, that was the one. I think it was Edeb. Uh, that looks looks cool. But I agree. Smart homes aren't for everybody, especially with EMF and whatnot. We want to make sure that uh, you know people are living in healthy homes for them and whatnot. But some people do really appreciate the smart aspect of it. So definitely. Cool. Yeah. Let's see, oh, click on their models. Design yours. Oh yeah, you design yours or model. Yeah, so this is where you can start yeah. your idea, share it. So at the bottom you of their that, in the, that link in there. Um, this is where you can kind of give them feedback, and they'll they'll definitely be appreciative of that. Cool. Look at that. You can even uh win some uh win some cash back and win some money and whatnot. So there you go. Good way to go. Awesome. Stop sharing here. Okay. Cool. Still have to ship painting. Oh yeah, of course. Oh, this ship painting. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, we do, Nick. Sailor that heart, and I think some of you guys know that. But that's how we got started in the tiny house world. Prior to starting our tiny house company um, back in 2011, 2011 or so, uh, I guess in 2012, we went 
uh, on a sailing trip from San Diego, California to Australia, uh, Brisbane, Australia. So that was about nine months of just being on a tiny little boat, uh, sailing through the South Pacific. We hit all the different islands uh, throughout the South Pacific on this incredible journey, uh, awesome adventure. But um, it taught us a lot of things about small homes, about small spaces, how to live within your means. Obviously out there, you can't just hop in a little car or bike and and go to a grocery store. You have to be super conscious of your, um, you know, rationing food and water um, and understanding kind of where to get food from the ocean and how to do that. And, and you know, be, you know, it also led to amazing uh, relationships with, you um, you know, the different locals on all the different islands, um, be able to talk with them and, and learn about how they're, um, you know, living and producing their own food and all these things. So, but it really, I yeah, talked a lot about small spaces, um, living off grid, because literally there's no grid to even plug in if you have to. So, uh, yeah, we had our full batter bank and, uh, inverter and everything set up, but we, it also, since it was so long ago, I mean, not so long ago, but it was, you know, 12, 13 years ago, the, the like off-grid technology now like what Renogy and whatnot can do is literally so much better than what we had the opportunity for back then so we'd have to always be like super careful with our energy consumption and whatnot but um the strangest and most unique food we ate so i um, ate a lot of fish eyes i mean you have to full of them. lots of good nutrients yeah. and then See, we did a couple different um, like little uh, luau type like feasts with the locals, which is really fun. Um, probably like their strange like fruits and fruits and uh, vegetables and whatnot. And then, yeah, because it was the South Pacific and all like islands, it was a lot of just like seafood. So you know, definitely some interesting fish that we haven't tasted before. Um, and you know, obviously things like octopus, squid, all the different kind of random things like that but yeah maybe we, we will write a book at some point you never know keep you on your toes yeah and uh, uh the sailboat wasn't set up with bunks or like bunk beds but it had like you know kind of bunks um uh just like stateroom type of bunks that were uh not very big but <laughs> yeah sushi craving absolutely you're making me hungry and Christy, I think he's uh, he was referencing the picture right behind our heads here. Um, and that's how we kind of got on the tangent of uh, sailing. And that's where we picked up our um, kind of love for small spaces and, and, and just like the mindset to be able to live in small spaces, which helped us design them and understand what you really need. Um, uh, and, and more specifically, even I'd like to flip that on its head. It's not like, what do you need? But it's more like, there's so much stuff that we have that doesn't make anybody happier. It literally just breeds discontentment. And what you find when you're out on a sailing trip is that like you become so much more content because you can't just get everything. You can't just, you know, order something on Amazon and go to the store or whatever. It's literally like, well, we don't have it. So we're going to have to do without it. And it helps you just like be in the moment. And it was one of the rare seasons of life where it seemed like we had more time or like that time wasn't this like just constantly just going by. And it seems like everybody that you talk to is like, ah, life's busy. Life, I don't have much time for whatever. But it was like when we we're out there, when we we're just at this, the ease and simplicity like that, it just literally was like time was, uh, yeah, it, it was amazing. It was like uh, it, you didn't have to wear a watch. You didn't have to worry about what time it was all day long. It was pretty awesome. So it was, yeah. Let's try to pull this up, but I don't know if it's going to do it. Yeah, there's tons of lessons to be learned there. Um, yeah, I mean, we got into some, Deb, you're asking where there are some scary high seas. There were definitely were some, uh, we got into some storms for sure. Um, uh, we talk. Yeah, we got into a pretty big storm at one point. Um, well, we had some big crossings too. I don't know if, I mean, there's, there's obviously a lot of, uh, parallels between sailing and tiny home living um the boat was 46 foot long um but of course it's you know it's tapered like a sailboat so it lives a lot closer to probably a you know 26 foot tiny house um as far as like the actual livable square feet goes but uh you know from our crossing from california to 
uh, sorry, from Mexico to the Marquesas, it was 21 days at sea. Um, and so you're literally thousands of miles away from the, any closest landmass, uh, let alone little tiny island. And so uh, you're just sailing day in and day out, 24 seven, goes all through the night. Um, and just for 21 days straight, three weeks of just sailing across the ocean to this island, a uh, small little island group. Um, and so uh, we had another crossing like that um, between Tahiti and Tonga. And we got into a pretty nasty storm where we ended up inside of an eye of a small cyclone. Um, and you know, our sailboat, you know, obviously typically sailing like this, it got completely smashed down where the mast was underwater. Water was pouring into the cabin. Everything was just all rattled up. We were terrified. It was pretty scary. And if that was, again, that was, I think, 750 miles away from the closest uh, island group. Um, so that one was pretty wild. Um, and of course, yeah, Robert, you saying, oh, you did that. Uh, the United U.S. Coast Guard? Coast Guard. Nice. You did, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. So yeah, definitely some awesome stories like that. Couldn't find it. That's all right. Um, yeah. we, we did it with, uh, so it was both of us um, and our, our dad and mom came. And then let's see, a couple of our good buddies were there for a while for most of it as well. Our dad sailed around the world when he was a kid with his parents. And so he'd always tell us his stories and we twisted his arm enough to where he finally decided to take us. So, but uh yeah, so we definitely will be doing another voyage. Our goal is when our kids are a little bit older to do it again, but uh, we're not quite to that stage yet. So we're uh, looking forward to it. That's going to be fun. Yeah, maybe you can join us, Lisa. We'll do a tiny house meetup out there. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I think Nick and Scott would rustle it out and somebody would end up overboard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be a lot. I mean, it was pretty crazy. Like we had six people, basically, if you could think about it, six people living in a 26 foot tiny house. Um, that's about the equivalent there. So it was, you know, it was, there's definitely like, we had to learn how to like get along and get out, like, you know, work together. And, um, you know, if there's any, you know, discontent or uh, strife, you work it out right then and there. You don't let it just harbor. Um uh, cause that's, you know, that's not good for anyone. So let's see, I think just so you guys have it too, this is, here's a little bit about what Zach was talking about, um, wrote this a while ago back in 2021, but, uh, wrote this and it touches on a little bit about, you know, if for, for those that are interested in kind of our learnings and, um, kind of the freedom that you can learn from going tiny and being, um, you know, intentional to simplify your life and get rid of distractions, get rid of things that just um, cause you worry or stress. Um, that's what we found out there. And, um, you know, it was a huge, huge uh, blessing in that sense. So, and that propelled us, like we were saying, to start um, our tiny house company. And and then from there to start tinyhouse.com and now here with you all. So <laughs> full circle. Oh yeah, Zach ate a ton of fish eyes. Yeah, a lot of them. Delicious. But yeah. So anyways, we're we're open for the next 10 minutes um, to answer any sort of Q&A for anyone here, uh, whether it's tiny home related, sailing related, um, uh, let us know. Definitely, and we've, uh, we've been loving this event. It's obviously been a full uh, crunch mode over the last couple of weeks, getting ready for it, putting all the details together and whatnot, but uh, we love it. And this this go around, we want to definitely keep the energy up and we want to uh, make sure that after this event that we have some more uh, webinars and workshops and different things like that planned. And so we're going to be making sure that we uh, can connect with you guys in different ways and connect you guys with other uh, members of the community and so on. And some of our different ideas are, you know, for people who are looking for a, a tiny house builder, we want to be able to do like online builder expos and whatnot that way you can have multiple people you can check out multiple different builders and see which one just resonates with you the best or uh, builds the best and then um, you know just different ideas like that other types of smaller events not quite uh, to this grand of scale but events that are uh, you know more 
topic fo focus so that you can have more specific information on a, on a general topic. So, yeah, so for example, curating one around all things around ADUs or small homes on foundations. So just bringing in the experts in that field and having a smaller um, one day kind of uh, workshop there and just general workshops in general. If there's any um, topic that you guys would love to have a workshop on or, or a smaller focused um, event on drop it in the comments here and we'll we'll definitely add it to the list or email us at uh, support yeah. at pennyhouse.com send us over any and all of your ideas if you guys are looking for um yeah anything relating to uh tiny homes like any sort of session or any sort of q a or um event like anything like that definitely just let us know because our goal is to not just do things that we want and we want to know about and talk about, but we want to do stuff that you guys are actually looking for. And we want this stuff to be impactful. And so, uh, yeah, definitely let us know what you guys are specifically wanting to look for. And like, like, uh, yeah, financing, living low EMF, all of that is, um, definitely important. So, and Deb, yeah, you were saying you'd love a session on, uh, eco-friendly toxin free, uh, materials. Um, so Ben Garrett, he's a specialty in that specialist in that um, from Australia, I think. But uh, he he didn't present this year at this conference, but he's done, I think, two sessions in our past events. Um, and he's a wealth of knowledge in that space. Um, so if you go to the community um, uh, space right there, I just dropped the link, the community um, dashboard there. You should be able to find that in the past events um, and uh, feel free to reach workshop out to us. And, I think yeah. Ben did a workshop with us. So um yeah, definitely. And then let's see, we'll just go through a couple of these. Okay, so uh, Christy likes the the tighter, shorter timelines. We always get feedback on every single side of it where some people are like, we want longer sessions and some people are like, we want shorter. And so the 30 minutes really isn't quite enough to like dive deep and really do a lot. But if we're going to go a lot further then the event just gets so much longer and then we, um, you know, it, it makes it harder for people just to sit in front of their computer for four days. So that's why we're really excited and looking forward to the, the workshops and the webinars. That'll be a little more of like a standalone event or standalone session where it's like, on a random Thursday, we'll throw a webinar all about financing. And that way you guys can come bring all of your conversations. And if we have an expert at that point in time, they can talk for hour and a half or two hours and really go deep into the nitty gritty. This event is more to uh, you know, bring you uh, to speed on a lot of different things that are going on, some more deep dives, and then also just some brief the surface. And if it, something is like, oh, I need to learn more about that, that's where we hope the webinars and workshops will be able to kind of fill that gap there. But um, uh, Ben Garrett, he's at, he lives in uh, Canada now, but um, like I think BC, Canada, but he, I think he's Australian. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And the, the shorter format definitely kind of gets the speaker to hopefully emphasize the kind of the quick hitters. Um, but it is a balance of like trying to find, you know, enough time for them to dive deep into topics, but also, you know, keep it nice and succinct. Um, and then hopefully, like Zach said, we can break out into deeper conversation and workshops and whatnot. Um, yeah, Lisa, or let's see, Lessa, Lisa. Oh, yeah, we've already went over this. It's Lisa. <laughs> yeah, financing is a great one. Lots to go over there. Like Nick was saying, 21st mortgage is a good um uh, and as you know, so yeah, you got to go through an authorized builder for them, but, um, uh, and Nick, I'm sure can help you out with that. He's a ton of knowledge, um, and definitely authorized, reputable builder. Yep. Uh, I love these ideas like tiny home with foundation and remote area and, um, list of vetted reputable builders. Like that's all the type of stuff that we want to be able to provide so that, you know, it's not just the sea of information that could or could not be true online. We want to make sure that we're curating unbiased and uh, vetted vendors and builders and everything that we're uh, supplying there. So cool. at least like shorter as well. How to leverage outdoor space. Nice. Like that. Um, pros and cons of slab versus peer foundations. That'd be a good one for sure. Um Awesome. Well, I think uh, if you guys have any other questions, it's, um, otherwise we'll um, jump to the next session, which is Thomas Slack. 
And that would be a good one. That one's in five minutes or four minutes. Uh, Deb, yeah, we worked with Ethan before. He's he's been uh, spoke on this uh, event before, um, and we connect with him a couple times a year. Glasses. Um, mine are from um, Warby Parker. It's actually one of our sponsors. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> Warby yeah. Parker, and uh, they're cheap, and they get the job done, and they last until you break them. So there it is. Hey, Lise. Yeah, you just got here. Yeah, this is a uh, session, hour-long session with PodX Go, but they, unfortunately, last minute, were not able to attend. Um, so uh, they, we played a video of uh, what they had recorded for us. And so Leanna, the, one of the co-founders of PodX Go, was able to talk and then also show some other videos of their unit and so on. And uh, this will all be available in the recordings. So we'll make sure that you guys have access to those as soon as uh, uh, they're all live and online and we can send them over your way and whatnot. And Deb's asking if we work with Ethan. We we know Ethan. Oh, he's yeah, an sure. awesome dude. We love Ethan. And uh, he's been on our, actually multiple of our past events and so on. So, um, but as far as like working, working with him, we don't necessarily like work hand in hand with a lot of people we just kind of bring the community together and we send people to uh experts and whatnot we let experts talk and whatnot so other than just having people on our events and whatnot that's about uh the max of it so yep and like zach said the recordings will be available and the community will get that all to you guys um, and those will be available indefinitely so no worries on that and uh we just dropped the links there for the next session with Thomas Slack. Uh, that starts in just a few minutes. So we're going to go ahead and bow out and get him inside of his next session. And we'll um, see you guys over there. All right. Thanks, you guys. See, see you ya. later.